I seem to have a bit of a theme going on here. This is another bit of U from one of the guys at the club. It's a piece of English U. So we're back on the English U bandwagon again. But if we look at it, I mean it's an absolutely gorgeous colour. Very nice heart sap definition. So any idea about the quality of English U, the actual timber itself, is self-evidently nonsense. The question is, can you get a bit that's long enough, straight enough and not free enough? Well, that is a different question entirely. Now this is quite a clean looking bit on that side, but you can see there's knots. And at this end, we're running out of timber. You can see there's not a lot of thickness there. But the big fly in the ointment is this knot, which you can see is fairly big. And you can see, oh, well, there's no problem. We can lay the bow out here, can't we? But then we come along, oh dear, there's this knot which would be in the middle of the working limb, which is a bad thing. So a knot in the grip's not too bad. So do we lay it out with a big fat knot in the grip, or a nice bulge at the grip, keep it slightly stiff in the handle, and run the bow along this way? Oh, but look, now we've got a knot here, haven't we? Oh, booger. So you can see... It's the age-old problem. Where do you lay out the bow in the, in the log? Where do you find the stave in the tree? And it's what I say about spending a lot of time thinking, more time thinking and looking than actually doing. So I reckon our best bet may be to try and lay it out along this edge. So we miss this knot. And we're fairly clean up here. But what you've got to watch out for is you're running out of wood here. But there's another side advantage. If we take a, the bow off this side of the log, there's a slim but finite chance you might get a second stave. But the trick is, you know, if we're laying it out like that, this really thin edge is waste. What you've got to do is saw that off first. Because a half a log, or it's not even quite half a log, is deceptive. If you look at it here, it's easier to think, oh, look, I've got, I've got tons of room. I can get two staves out there. But if you actually look on the end, we're looking at one stave here to avoid the knots. And yes, you, you may possibly get another stave here. But, You've got to remember this is the fat end. At the thin end, there is very little to play with. But looking down, we're looking quite straight there. So, yeah, what I'll probably do is try and run a saw cut along here. Get rid of this little corner. Because that just fools you into thinking you've got more wood than you really have. So get rid of that corner, or maybe flatten this face first. But I'll do a bit more thinking before I cut it. The other thing is he actually had two staves that he offered me to play with to make him a bow. I think he wants 110. I'll have to check that before I get going obviously. Uh, and the other one was one of these Italian U staves that some bloke had sold him for a good amount of money. Well it was fairly hideous. It was the same length as this overall with about a good 45 degree twist in it and a patch about a foot down from one end where the sapwood was all totally missing. And you think, hmm, well, do you saw that off or do you patch it? Or, you know, they were both above his pay grade. I mean, he's, he's starting out making bows. So I'm, I'm not trying to be derogatory, I'm just being honest. I mean, this, this bow is, you know, this stave, it's a nice bit of wood it needs an experienced bowyer to find where the bow, where the best bow 
is in the log. Uh, but yeah, but it's a nice contrast to the other stuff I've got to play with, the other English U, which was full of that blue stain with poorly defined heart and sap. And this just this contrasts and shows you the difference. You can't make generalisations. I think this was from the northern slope of the South Downs, which I used to live down that neck of the woods. And it's just got that lovely, you know, coffee and cream colour. It should be a very handsome bow with just a nice bit of character in it. Uh, what I might do is I'll rough out this one and rough out the next one from that scruffy you that I made the billet bow from. And that billet bow was useful because the guy, Don, I was going to make it for, he reckoned he could manage another five or ten pound draw weight, no problem. Because he's, he's, a, he's a shortish chap, but he's stocky and strong. Uh, so where I found it heavy going at 28, I mean, he was happy with it. But he was impressed how smooth it shot, which is quite interesting. So that was really just a test piece for the timber. I know the timber's good, but you compare it with this, chalk and cheese. You know, you could show the two side by side to someone and someone would, someone would go, oh, I bet that's Italian you and the other's um, scruffy, but you just can't tell. You can he tell. There's a little bit of pith that's the centre of the log. Yeah, looking forward to working that. That's it for now.